Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at the Savage Dragon versus the Savage Megaton Man by Eric Larson, Don Simpson. Uh, this is the first appearance of She Dragon. Um, interesting historical note. Um, really fun issue. Can't wait to show it to you guys. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. Okay, so I love this cover. I think it's fantastic. Um, early image uh, comics in the 90s. Um, the original creators had their own branches of image. Uh, Eric Larson's main book was Savage Dragon, but he did do a lot of spinoffs. Um, this is right before Freak Force came out. Um, he has the Vanguard miniseries going around this time. Which, interestingly, I think it was meant to be a uh, ongoing series. It wound up being six issues. Um, one of my favorite books. I covered a few issues, covering some more. Don Simpson is a great cartoonist. Um, I forgot that they mentioned, like, their relationship here. But, like, um, Savage Dragon was originally published or Eric Larson worked on Megaton uh, that had something to do with uh, Don Simpson. So like full circle moment or whatever, Eric Larson is now publishing um, Savage Dragon through Image Comics and throws Don Simpson a bone and they work together on this book, um, Savage Dragon versus the Savage Megaton Man. Don Simpson's superhero creation, and it's amazing. Like, it's such a great collaboration. Eric Larson is writing and drawing in um, the, all the Savage Dragon parts, and uh, Don Simpson is writing, penciling, inking, and lettering the Savage Megaton Man parts. And it's all colored by Steve Olaf, um, who does a great job. I, you know, I think a lot of early 90s coloring stands out as sort of like experimental. It's when they're first using computers and at least computer separations and things like that. And Steve Olaf was definitely um, one of the pioneers, I feel. Like he definitely had some great coloring. I've always loved his colors on Savage Dragon. I think Eric colors a lot of Dragon himself now. I know he's been coloring Ant, and I'm really digging Eric's colors, but I think Steve Bullock definitely um, uh, flattered his work a lot and really helped shape the look and feel of early Savage Dragon. Now, interesting to note, this is very early Image Comics. It's still under the Malibu Comics banner, um, which I think Marvel would go on to buy. So it's so weird how everything sort of, like, happens and switches hands and, like, like so many crazy things. I guess the cannibalistic nature of the comic book industry, like the fact that... Um, <clears throat> You know, Alan Moore uh, swore off working with DC Comics, so he works with, you know, gets convinced to work with Wildstorm by Jim Lee, and then Jim Lee sells Wildstorm to uh, DC Comics, which, you know, puts Alan Moore back into their house again, in a way. And then, um, you know, like, all the image guys leave Marvel, um, and Malibu agrees to publish them, and, and Marvel buys Malibu. I mean, it it's so wacky. Like, what's the point? So, it, it's interesting in these tag team books. Um, I love it because, as opposed to, like, a crossover where one creative team is doing the other person, you know, sometimes I feel like uh, you lose the essence of the character. So, it's like you're getting a team up but you're getting like um, the the proper version of the character by the actual creator. And of course, I mean, nobody draws double page spreads like Eric Larson, except for John Byrne, of course, which is interesting and a great segue because this is, um, Eric Larson had a lot of fun um, poking, um, 
you know, John Byrne was very critical of Image Comics, so Eric Larson definitely got his pot shots in, and this is like a, I think the biggest example of that, um, a total parody of John Byrne's Next Men, which was uh, John Byrne's uh, creator-owned superhero group. Um, basically John Byrne's X-Men, but John Byrne's Next Men. And the like aesthetically, I guess he couldn't just call them Next Men. Like it had to be John Byrne's Next Men as part of the title to sort of throw off the just rhyming with X-Men. Which is funny because they're all like, you know, trying to bite off the, you know, what made them all successful in the end run it. And anyway, I guess. But anyway, as I was saying, so John Byrne, you know, is the butt of Eric Larson's joke here. And Johnny Redbeard's Nixman. And this is supposed, you know, the She-Dragon. But it, interestingly... <clears throat> And reading this, you know, it's sort of just explaining, like, I perform for people from another realm that only I could see, like, referring to her, uh, uh, see my directionless non-adventures, um, petty jabs, lame jokes, and Pratt Falls, taking front of the humor and the fact that she, Hulk, broke the fourth wall. So I guess she's she-dragon... But it is interesting because I don't think she's referred to as She-Dragon in here. But this is technically her first appearance. And I thought that was a great parallel to kind of um, um, Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight were just created as these throwaway characters to be sort of, uh, you know, like um, foils to the X-Men. And then they wound up having their own book. And I thought, you know... I don't know, these characters do seem a little like they were created for um, a one-off gag for this book. I don't know that 100%. I don't know if Larson planned on using them all along, but obviously the potential was there. And I love She-Dragon. As I said, I was doing research for a project and I um, remembered and luckily had this copy of her first appearance and... Um, the fun of this book is so tremendous. I love this. Like, I really want to... I Like, I remember seeing <clears throat> Don Simpson's art and just... I love his classical cartooning. He has, like, the perfect, like, melding. Like, this is hysterical. Like, the dialogue is just so funny. I love these characters. Um, Yarn Man... Like, uh, Jungle Girl, Rubber Brother, I don't know, that's, uh, you know, questionable at best by, uh, today's, uh, um, uh, you know, social climate. I mean, it's, like, uh, so telling of comics in the past. I mean, this is the 90s, so, you know, I don't think it's, they were trying to be racist or anything, but it's just funny that the black character is always called Black This or Black That. Or something brother, you know what I mean? It just seems a little stereotypical, obviously. But, that said, he's a cool looking character. They're fun characters. I love Don Simpson's art. It's funny and <clears throat> also probably because of the coloring of Steve Olaf, but I don't know, it blends together really well. Like, even though the styles are obviously starkly different and you can definitely see the difference. I think there's such a reverence for like comic art and classic art and just like action and like good storytelling that just brings it together so well. Um, that's what I liked about like, uh, I feel like Eric Larson just has like such a love of comic books that he's all in on like projects like this. And like, it's funny because the Megaton Man parts do you seem a little, you know, heavy? Well, and then I get to all this dialogue. I was going to say it do, does seem a little more thought out, a little more involved, but not to say that the other part isn't great because it is the Johnny Redbeard's Nixman debut after all. I just love uh, Don Simpson's uh, art here. 
it's just so good. Just like his ink line, like his brush work, just like the feathering and the points are just so concise and just like really cool. I mean, he did splitting image, which I also covered, um, which was hilarious. And there's just a lot of great gags in here and a lot of fun dialogue, like a lot of pot shots at image in general. And I think it's always good to sort of like be in on the joke and parody yourself. And um, everyone's gonna probably 100% disagree with me maybe, but, and maybe it's been brought up before, I don't know. But just looking at some of these, uh, I love, like this is my favorite, no offense to like Malcolm Dragon, but um, this is my dragon and I love this dragon and it's like, Maybe that's why I don't religiously read the new dragon, the current dragon, just because I'm nostalgic like that. Like, I just want Peter Parker. I want Tony Stark. I want, um, you know, Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne. Like, <clears throat> no one can replace them, and no one should. But, you know, I guess if you're going to do 300 issues and you have a an arc in mind and it's your book, do whatever the hell you want with it, right, Eric Larson? Um, but wouldn't Bruce Willis have made, I guess he's retiring now because, of, sadly, because of, uh, you know, his uh, declining cognitive health or whatever, but, which is truly sad, but I feel like Bruce Willis would have made an awesome Savage Dragon. There I said it. I love Megaton Man, like, he's, like, Superman, but then he's got, like, Cyclops' visor and just this humongous, like, Dudley Do-Right chin. This is such a freaking awesome panel. I love this. Like, gorgeous. You see, this is what I love, and this is, like, such, like, um, it's, it's the beauty and joy of comic book art. It's, like, you take someone like this artist, like Don Simpson, and this is such a, like, a great classic comic book superhero panel right here, but done in his, like, amazing, exaggerated cartoon style, but still with all the technique and drama and, like, the amazing use of negative space and the spotting of blacks. And, like, this little, like, debris from the brick wall um, around here could almost be, like, Kirby Crackle. Like, it's amazing. And he's only drawing half the panel, and then you got this, like, sick, like, Eric Larson dragon at the bottom of it. I mean, this book is artistic gold. I mean, I was trying to figure out, I wonder how they split up the, like, who got to keep the pages. If I were Eric Larson, I'd be like, I'm keeping all of them. I published it. They're mine. <clears throat> <laughs> and it's so good. I don't know. It just gets, like, crazy. And, like, this. I love when comics, like, kind of, especially if they're, like, funny anyway. Like, The Pro, one of my favorite comic books by Jimmy Palmiotti and uh, Amanda Connor, where it just, like, it just <laughs> goes off the rails and, like, just really goes for it. And it's really going for it here. But the artistry is so good. I love this background panel and just, like... The inking is, like, tremendous. And Eric Larson has, like, always sort of uh, had different phases of inking. And this was definitely a high point in his inking right there. I think that is, like, dragon at the top of this game. Just looking amazing. And for people who watch my show know that, and I'm so happy I, when I can say it, that this is the inevitable point in the review of an image comic book where we turn the book sideways for the big, large art panel. And in this case, so worth it. This, like, Cyclopean troll giant with these, like, little nixed men in the background. And She-Dragon, yes, that's totally She-Dragon, right, guys? Me, I'm Slag Heap. I mean, this is so good. I mean, that's so perfect for, like, us. Uh, an Eric Larson, Savage Dragon villain, just like over the top. <laughs> and they just punch his lights out. What a great panel. I love that. Like the power of Kirby and just like so good. There's a lot of really good inking on this. 
Eric Larson, like a, a lot of the great, the image uh, founders are in addition to being like really good pencilers um, that I feel like they're mostly known for are like such tremendous anchors as well. And like really revolutionized inking in a lot of ways, like uh, like top, top cow, Mark Silvestri's anchors. Oh my God, like Renaissance art, um, McFarlane, Larson, Liefeld, oh my god, like, his inking is, like, totally off the chain. Anyway, definitely one of the strengths of his art. I love this Jungle Girl character. I want to read these Megaton Man, Dom Simpson characters. Like, what a great print. I would totally want to own that. It could have been yours for only how much? 20 bucks? No way. If anybody out there owns that, they're so lucky. Um, I guess I just couldn't do it all back then, or else I would have, right? Freak Force, coming soon, one of my favorite books ever. I definitely covered that. The Savage Text page, early, um, early image was so amazing. I love this here, too. So uh, they drew each other's characters. I don't, you know, it's like Eric Larson must have been busy AF, uh, getting ready to put out freak force doing the monthly dragon i think vanguard's floating around and like you know maybe deadly duo just like so many things like his output is tremendous and then he flies back to marvel and does defenders at some point which i think is probably not till like maybe 95 or something anyway love this character i love seeing um eric larson's depiction of him that is such a great pinup right there um, really love the inking. Very, very cool. <laughs> this Don Simpson's dragon is very cool. I'm sure Finn Hats immediately would say, he got the Finn wrong. Like, I guess the Finn is supposed to be, like, more like mm, 45 degree to the forehead. Something. I forgot the formula, but hey, it's Don Simpsonized. That's what I feel like. I feel like, uh, and maybe that's, like, just defending bad art. Um, but I feel like that's the joy of having a different artist draw a different character. It's like, what's to get wrong if it's their version of that character? I mean, it's not Eric Larson's and it's quite a departure. Like that face is very different. He looks sort of like an Italian, um, like an Italian New Yorker. For lack of a better, I don't know. He just looks Italian to me for some reason. But it looks very cool, of course. I love Dan Simpson's art. And, like, I love, like, he just really puts, like, everything into it, I feel. Like, it's, like, this definitely was made by people who love comics and love to draw comics. It got very dark. Interesting. But this character is so good. I would love to see more of him. Bring him back, guys. Jay Lee's Chapel. Like, it doesn't get much better than that. Supreme, number three. Spawn, number nine. Pit. Such a great time. Wild Star by Jerry Ordway. Oh, my God. Amazing. All right, guys. So that was Savage Dragon versus Savage Magaton Man. First appearance of She-Dragon. Key issue there, guys. 90s comics are on the rise. Be on the lookout for this. I'm sure it's probably sadly still in the dollar bin. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. And I'll bring you some more soon. Thanks.